Most classrooms usually have very low student engagements. Like when teacher asks the questions, teacher students are always thinking, don't look at me, nope. Hope you don't see us. And what's more sad is that teachers think this is the norm. They're okay with it. They always think that not most of the students anyways won't participate. So they're completely okay. But here's the problem. This happens because teachers are making one big, big, grave mistake. They ask questions that have a right or wrong answer. Like say, what's Newton's second law? So when someone tries to give an answer and say gives a wrong answer, um, is it F equals MV? Their reaction is to shut it down. No. Huh? Guess what? This makes your already anxious, probably hormonal teenagers even more so. <laughs> <laughs> you got oh it wrong. God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no. You've just made sure that she will never ever participate ever again in your classroom. Never, never ever again. And you do this enough number of times, you will guarantee that most of your class will be disengaged. Don't look at me. Nope. Hope you don't see us. But there's a good news. You can fix this. All you have to do is change the goal of the question that you're asking. See, instead of asking questions to seek the right answer, what you can do is try to seek what the students are thinking. How? Well, you can do that by asking these four kinds of questions. The first one is called probing. You try to basically probe and see what are the students thinking? So let's see how this conversation might go. How do you think the force is related to motion? Um, um, F equals MV? Don't think about whether the answer is right or wrong because remember, your goal is to try and understand what the students are thinking. So the second kind of question that you can ask is you can follow up, try to get more details out of them. Can you tell me more? I think pushing harder gives more speed. That's what F equals MV means, right? See, we're already making progress. We're already having a conversation going. The third kind of question that you can ask now is called pressing. This is where you ask for evidence-based explanation. This is what science is all about. Why do you think so? Any examples that come to your mind? Yeah, uh, whenever I push a toy car, it makes it go faster. But here's the thing, asking for evidence can actually make the students squirm. So don't use this a lot. Then again, you will discourage students because they probably may not have the evidence for all the things that they're saying. So use pressing sparingly. And fourth, one of the most powerful things you can do in your classroom is to have crosstalk. You can ask other people to chime in and there are so many different things you can do. Here are a few examples. Can someone rephrase what she said? Yeah, she said more push gives more speed. You can also ask to see if somebody has a contrary opinion. Anyone who disagrees? Yeah, it's actually acceleration, not the speed. And finally, towards the end of the discussion, you can ask someone else to summarize whatever has been discussed so far. Can someone compare his idea with hers? Yeah. Basically, she said force has something to do with speed, but my friend says that force has something to do with acceleration. So which one is it? Notice what you've done. By making sure you're not worrying about the right answer, children are no longer put on the spot. They don't have to worry about risking of being wrong. As a result, what happens? Well, they can now participate. They can just talk their minds out. This will ensure that you have very rich student talk. And so what's the impact? What's the result of this? Well, first of all, you will now have massively engaged classroom and this is the best thing for teachers and students alike. But second, more importantly, the discussion will actually guide your future instruction. For in this case, the teacher might be thinking, hmm, I need to debunk this F equals MV. This is coming a lot, so I need to make sure that I need to get rid of that. This also makes sure no two classrooms are the same. Your lesson plans will be customized to how your students are thinking. Isn't that amazing? So you do this and the eventual result is that your students will love you. They will love you, they'll love your teaching and they will love your subject. So in summary, instead of asking questions to seek right answers, ask questions to seek what the students are thinking. And the four kinds of questions you can ask is probing, follow up, pressing, and finally crosstalk. My name is Mahesh Chanoi, and if you want more insights on how to teach for 21st century skills, follow me.